Hey, hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and update you guys with the 3.17 Righteous Fire Inquisitor League Starter. So before we get started, I want you guys to know that pretty much everything is going to be updated via this Google Docs that my moderator Chicken made. Um, so furthermore, anytime you're trying to find more updated info, try to come to this document instead of random POBs for my old URLs. So with that being said, let's get started. Before we go into a deep dive of this POB, I want to show you guys how to level in Path of Exile, or specifically Righteous Fire. So we're going to go to this document, we're going to go to the leveling POB, we are just going to take the leveling POB, we're going to go new, import, import from website, import it, and you're done. From here, you're going to see a nice detailed step-by-step -step guide that Chicken made for you guys on basically how to level up, where to go with your passive tree, your items that you're going to be using from X level. And if you have a twink setup, then, you know, if it's your second or third character, then you have a setup here as well. And an extremely detailed skill gem setup that I don't even know how to make. So that's all for you guys. Now, of course, if you're more experienced, you don't have to follow this stuff. This is, again, mainly for the very, 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 very new players who need that additional help. From there, we're going to go back and we're going to go through what this video is made for. So I have created the League Start 3.17 character, which is going to be right here. If you guys want the other variants of my build, so if you watched last league, there was an Explode setup. That's going to be here. You obviously cannot play Explode until you get some desired items, so we're not talking about that. So new, import. Now, this character is a little above level 90, but this is basically not necessarily where you're getting off from the leveling guide because the leveling guide is going to put you to around like level 70 or so. So from there, uh, it's pretty much up to you where you want to go. So a quick example is for players who are not super high level yet, you don't have to be in Marauder. You pretty much are going to uncheck all two point jewels. So two point jewel here. You've got a two point jewel here. You've got another two point jewel. You've got an entire cluster jewel that you will not be using a cluster jewel setup until you have a master of fire. Thanks, Bilar. Appreciate the raid, homie. Um, going on into it, you don't necessarily have to take like faith and steel right away. You may not need amplify for some AOE nodes. Anyway, we're not here to talk about that. We're going to talk about some other stuff. So um, in this, I have tried to gear it to like a around 5 to 15 exalt area. I know that's not like exactly league start viable but if you'll notice the damage previously on righteous fire you'd have much less damage so i have tried my best to make it so for the currency you're putting in you're still getting a very thick character and you shouldn't feel like you have you know 10 to 15 minute boss fights so this is showing your damage with let me just confirm for you guys this is no you know vol righteous fire this is just regular vol righteous fire all gems are simply level 20 with quality. There are no alternate gems except for life tap, which really doesn't matter. It's just for extra duration. There are no awakened gems in here. So everything is standard. There are no 21 gems. Everything is just standard 20 setup. Going into the calculator configurator, the only thing I have that may not be 100% uptime when you're bossing is cover and ash, which is going to be from your infernal cry. And is the enemy ignited, which is going to be from your shield charge combustion. Other than that, that's it. That, that, that's it. Um, remember, for people who are wondering why there is scorched ground, the new boots we're going to be using are going to scorch enemies in an AoE around you. So even if you were to uncheck a lot of the more expensive items that may only be like 20 chaos to an exalt on League Start, with the you know bare minimum, if I uncheck all of this, you're still at a million damage. So with that being said... Let's go ahead and get into it. Oh, is that anything burning? I don't think this changes anything. So, this is going to talk more about the gearing. I have done so many videos kind of explaining the skill tree setup. So, I want to focus more on the gear. Weapon. We've got a 32 fire multi with an LE damage implicit with 52% fire damage and a crafted damage over time roll. Now, this may seem a little bit unachievable. However... The 52% fire damage roll is a tier 5 fire damage roll now. They equalize roll values, meaning this is much easier to get now. 
So this is essentially a high fire multi roll with a fire damage roll with crafted damage over time, and that's it. The harvest uh, grants Ellie damage quality is like not a super big deal. It's you know it's just something to kind of focus on for later what you want. You can also switch that with AOE. Even if you have a much weaker weapon, you're still going to be able to clear content. It's not a big deal. Uh, with the introduction of the some influence modifiers being moved to regular shields, you can now straight up identify rare energy shield bases and get maximum fire res. So this is showing an example of a tier 5 fire damage roll with a life roll with max fire res and then just crafting cold and lightning. Helmet is always going to be a pain in the ass to roll. Um, this is an essence of horror helmet. So this has the 30% more Ellie with a level 18 burn and then just crafted AoE and that's it. You could get this anywhere as as lucky as one essence of horror craft to usually it's about within 15 you do hit a burn damage roll. Some people get super lucky. This is not really something I can price. It's so fucking random. But there is one thing I really want to explain. If you get a level 16, 18, or 20 burn, do not roll it over. A lot of people saw me with an elevated burn and they kept wasting essences of horror to try to get a level 25 burn. Do not do that. If you have a level 16 support gem, it's way better than having a level zero support gem. Significantly better. So this is definitely like where majority of your gold is going to go when you want your big damage increase just to go into the configurator and show if you remove elemental focus which is 34 percent more ellie plus the increase you can see the amount of damage it gives you so you lose 241k for not having that essence of horror on it's pretty big right it is definitely something you want to focus on okay going over to the body armor so with new change to influence items, I think rare body armors are going to be much more accessible. So this may look like it has a bunch of stats on it. You can buy the Emperor of Purity Divination card, which gives you a six link for usually under 20 to 30 chaos all throughout the league. As the league goes on, they turn into one divination card. Uh, sorry, one chaos divination card, which makes them even cheaper. It guarantees you a six link. The six link is guaranteed to be armor ES. It's not saintly, but it, it doesn't matter. Um, you get, so then from here, you can either A, Essence Craft, B, Fossil Craft, and you're looking for a high life roll with regeneration and any resistance you can get. If you have a prefix open, which you want to roll till you get a prefix open, there is a Betrayal Craft you can get. So again, just lock behind Betrayal for gain 10% of max life as Energy Shield. I don't know if you looked at it, but over on our values here, we have 5,400 life with 3,300 Energy Shield. Very thick build. Then, remember, on top of that, with the new uh, changes, you can actually add the new, um, what is it called? The new uh, implicits onto, I think, majority of your gear. I believe it's gloves, boots, body armor, helmet. So we won't get it on the body armor. Sorry, we won't get it on the helmet because it's uh, elder crafted. Going on to the gloves. Previously, you would want apothecary hunter gloves. Apothecary hunter gloves sucked because they were a minimum of like two exalts right away. Um, and that's just garbage now you don't have to worry about getting a hunter apothecary glove why well previously you wanted hunter because it rolled fire multi and you wanted apothecary because the implicit for ellie uh damage over time now the implicit gets overridden by the new implicit and you don't need hunter because one of the implicits is fire multi so that's really good because it frees up suffixes for you allowing you to get that increased life regen suffix that is just a direct multiplier to all of your regeneration. That's part of why I'm so excited for this specific patch. Moving down, we've got Boots. So Boots are Legacy of Fury. These are a Maven drop. It's the most common item drop from Maven. I cannot imagine it's going to be crazy expensive past like the first few days or few week into the league. I could totally be wrong. It might be a 1020 Exalt item. I mean, I really don't think it is. But this is what the new build archetype for Righteous Fire is what I'm basing it on, is the Legacy of Fury. So if you didn't watch my previous video, the change to it is the drop Scorched Ground while moving is being turned into enemies around you are Scorched. So you walk through with RF, you kill mobs who are Scorched in an AoE. The mobs who are Scorched have a chance to die, thus igniting or burning targets around them. And the burn is based off of maximum health. If you guys have ever played any build with max health scaling, 
detonate dead, explode. You'll know that 8% of a target's life is a lot of damage for an ignite. So this should just smooth out your map clearing without having to jump to a crazy assonance setup. Obviously, if you want a pure mapper, the assonance setup is probably going to be BIS, but this is something cool to play around that gives you a big damage increase. It's also important to know that because of these boots and because they apply Scorch, you can actually scale effective non-damaging ailments, and it's like a multiplier to your damage because it's reducing boss res. Next up, Amulet. You no longer need dual-influenced Amulet. In fact, you don't even need an influence. You're pretty much just looking for plus one to level of Int and Fire. In this setup, we just have Int. So it's an Int Amulet with life on a marble base with minimum frenzy roll. Minimum frenzy is crafted from betrayal. It costs a divine orb, so it's not like it's anything crazy. You could have a way better amulet. This is just showing what you could get. I don't think it's gonna be super hard, but to be fair, they may lock plus one gems behind really high item level, in which case, if they do, you could use an essence of delirium on an amp. Actually, you don't even need to do that. I think you can get damage over time multi on amulets in general. So you could just go with the previous way um, from my previous crafting guide, which is spamming Essence of Anger, which is percent damage. Yeah, percent fire damage. Going on ring one and ring two. So this is an expensive ring. However, it shows, I put little text here. Fractured rings are better to craft on, but way more expensive. So this is just kind of showing you that an end game ring, if you have a flammability on hit locked in, it's going to be a couple of exalt. Um, it is probably the best way to craft it. That being said, the stats are not like difficult to get on this. This is just a flam on hit with a suffix for dexterity and fire damage. You don't need the fire damage. It's just kind of something extra. It's kind of showing you how I crafted it with the essences and then crafted life roll. The mana is completely irrelevant. Remember, you can get recoup now and recoup is going to be awesome for sustaining against very high damage targets. Ring two is kind of like ring one but it does not have um it does not have the flam on hit because you don't need more than one so it's just dex life res minimum frenzy again you could get recoup which is awesome belt uh replica soul tether is always going to be a couple of exalt on league star it always tanks in price if you don't have a replica soul tether simply use a regular belt with life recovery life regeneration flat life you can fossil craft or essence craft. There's many different things. It's basically going to be like a resistance slot for you to fill up res until you can transition into the soul tether, right? Soul tether doesn't really give you like crazy damage. It just gives you the most like thick defensive layer you can basically get for the build. Usually replica soul tether is for pushing into your red tier maps. You don't really need it in earlier content. Flask setup is just full masochistic. Anytime you get hit, you gain charges. Um, you're pretty flexible with kind of what you want to do here. So I'm running a Granite, an Amethyst, a Quicksilver, and a Ruby. The reason for the Amethyst is I want to have high Chaos Res so I can use a Forbidden Taste. Forbidden Taste is when you get a, when you take a Savage hit, it'll instantly recover your maximum life. It's important to know that you do not want to use the Use When You Take a Savage Hit on Forbidden Taste Alongside, you don't want to use Forbidden Taste in general if you have really bad Chaos Res. Because you will take 25% um, of your max life as Chaos per second. So you might end up healing yourself and then degen like 3000 HP because you're in like negative 60 Chaos Res. You do not want to do that. That's, that's not good. This is when you have good Chaos Resist. Moving on, I've got some Jewels. Fire Multi Life. Fire Multi... Or uh, Burn Damage Life. Fire multi-life. These can massively be upgraded. I have a Watcher's Eye with a single stat, only Chaos Res while affected by Purity of Elements. You do not need this by any means. This is just showing you like an example of something. So I put here, you can have Dot Multi with Malevolence. That's going to be very expensive. Life Recovery on Vitality. this Damage Reduction on Determination. There's even like Flat Armor on Determination. There's a lot of different combinations of Watcher's Eye. I would recommend getting something that is just cheap so you can like fill up your jewel slot. Next up, I have like a higher higher uh, value jewel, which is fire damage, max life burn. Could be better, but you know, it's gonna get multiple exalts past this. Then we have the cluster jewel set up. The cluster jewel is quite literally just to get master of fire. It does not matter what else you have. 
This part actually matters a little bit because you're pushing back the node. For that, you can just type in or copy the items from PoE Trade, simulate them inside POB, and it'll show you where your jewel ends up. The reason why you want Master of Fire is exposure is massive damage. If you look here at my DPS, if I take off Master of Fire, you lose 200k boss damage. You definitely want Master of Fire. But again, Master of Fire is helping you enter like red maps. You don't need damage anywhere near this to like progress at all in the game, right? The reason for this POB is to help guide players who are kind of struggling in getting damage and struggling in like clearing their awakeners and everything else. RF does not struggle in like really early content. It face rolls like most builds with your early content. Other than that, that pretty much covers it. I do want to jump into the notes section to explain a little bit of uh, some more detail and depth. So some things to note, you can hit over 5 million damage with big investment, 8 million plus using your Vol Righteous Fire. You can even go past that, but I'm not talking about multiple hundred exalt builds. I'm still talking about like under a hundred exalt reasonable, still very expensive, but you know, if you're achieving really high levels of damage with very high levels of survivability, it's going to be expensive no matter what build you play. So talking a little bit about this, min-maxing, you can save one point on the tree for getting a belt enchant for reduced curse effect. So that would be removing like this node here. That gives you a point back. You can gain um, two points for having a level three enlighten. The nice thing about this new build archetype that I've made is you don't run enlighten unless you get it. So you can actually run your auras so over here in the aura setup, we have malevolence, determination, and purity of elements, but I'm not using the enlighten. If you get the level three enlighten, you can remove this node here, and you can remove, where is it? Actually, I don't know if I, I think I'm supposed to change this, but we'll check after. I'll, I'll mess around with the POB later. You don't have to worry. Uh, but you would remove this, and you can remove this right here, and you'll still have mana. So that gives you points back. You can get one extra point back for int traveling nodes. So right now we have to have this int node selected because we don't have the int values. And typically you're going to have dex on your gear rather than int on your gear because that's kind of what you're aiming for because dex requirements are a pain in the ass. To fix that, when you get higher level, you can simply come over and grab like acrimony and that kind of pushes you to your int value that you want. You could also, this one's not really realistic, but if you get an insane jewel with Corrupted Blood Immune, you can drop Corrupted Blood here. That's not happening. Just like how if you got all your jewels with 15% chance to avoid stun, you could drop Unwavering Stance, but that's probably not happening. And that pretty much, that's pretty much it. Uh, I do have like an ABCD that I'm not really going to explain too much right now. You guys can kind of read this. And I do want to reiterate and explain again, though, that... This is built around the new Legacy of Fury. This is not my old Explode setup. For the old Explode setup, you can look in the document or just follow the POB here for the Explode setup. This is specifically for the League Starter. And if you somehow made it this far and skipped the beginning intro, remember that this is not a leveling guide. If you need a leveling guide, that's going to be inside this document where you can find the leveling POB right here. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. If you did, don't forget you can like, share, and subscribe. Also, don't forget you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. I'll even be streaming these uh, next two Sundays because of POE release. And don't forget, if you somehow don't know by now, you are killing all bandits. Take care. Have a wonderful time. Catch you guys all tomorrow.